Carl Sagan meets billions and billions of Martians will not be seen at this time. In its place, we present the following spaced out program. T minus 25 Columbia. We have main engine ignition 25, 24, 23. Hey, Walter. Well, we are about to blast off into space. What are you thinking of right now? My mother. Me too. And all the trouble she went through just to make sure I was wearing clean underwear. Mine too. No, she didn't have to bother. Mine either. I'm too scared. Blast off. You're really missing something. Oh, that's Ursa Minor. Oh, come on. I love astronomy. Will you just let me out of these chains and give me a look, please? Well, please. well, all right. Only because you're a lover of uh, stars. There, take a look. Go ahead. Right out there. Oh, oh. 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 oh, what you, oh I know. Oh. It's Haley's Comet? No, no, a, a meteor shower. Oh, no, no. It's Christine McGlade. What? She oh. isn't a star? Oh, I can see right into her dressing room. What? Oh, give me that. Give me that. You call that exciting? Yeah. Boy, you have been in here too long. Will you look at this junk? This is supposed to be one of the best outer space movies ever made, but it stinks. And just look at it. This is awful. The part that really bugs me is the special effects. They don't even look realistic. Now, who would believe there's a real outer space battle going on out there? Ready, aim. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop the execution. What is it this time? Well, did you know that when I grew up, I wanted to be an astronaut? No, I didn't. But that would be a very tough job for a little kid like you. Well, yeah, but it's an important one, too. Mm. But I guess now it doesn't matter since you're going to shoot me. Mm. I'll never get into orbit. Mm. What a waste. Mm -hmm. yeah, wait, wait a minute. I might be able to help you out. Really? You mean you're going to let me go? Not exactly, but I think I can help you go into orbit. Amigos, el dynamito! <laughs> oh, no, now I'm scared. Hi. Unless you're from another planet, you've probably guessed by now that this week's Out of This World episode, if you can't do that on television, is all about outer space and space travel and uh, weird alien beings. Dougie, what, are you going to a Star Trek convention or something? No, I'm just waiting for the aliens to arrive. They said they'd be here any minute. But, of course, they do have a few thousand light years to travel. You know, Dougie, my boy, I think that watching too much television has fried your little brain. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just a second. I'm getting some strange voices on my headphones, and they mentioned your name, Dougie. What do they say? They stopped at Alpha Centauri for breakfast, whoever they are. Boy, those guys must be pretty big eaters. <laughs> this is a little secret code you got amongst you and your little friends? Uh, no. Dougie insists that he's been communicating with aliens. <laughs> and the moon is made of green cheese. <laughs> Ross, everybody knows the moon is made of rock. And anyway, the moon did have a lot of cheese on it. But my friends ate most of it. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, oh I, think, I think one of Dougie's friends belched. Columbia, this is Houston Control. You boys ready to make that course change? Roger, Houston, we're ready. Go ahead. My name isn't Roger. It's Billy Bob Hank Jr. Sorry. Never mind. Just press the green button to make your turn. Oh, get it. I got I got oh, no. Um, Houston, I pressed the wrong button. Where did it go? Booster brain. You just dumped the shuttle toilet over Washington, D.C. If that stuff lands on the White House, 
Don't bother coming back. Nice one. Mom, Mom, guess what? What is it, Debbie? I just saw a flying saucer outside. Oh, yes, dear, I know. It came from right here in this kitchen. You see, the dishwasher's broken again. Ah, uh, Snake Eyes. Yeah? Don't you think we took that last curve just a little too fast? We're sort of in orbit here. Son of a gun. Wondered what all that space junk and them satellites was doing out there. I thought maybe we was at the Epcot Center. Um, do you have a license to drive in outer space? License? Space? I don't have a license to drive on Earth. Hey, watch what you're doing, where you're going, you crazy cosmonaut. You know, them Ruskies are all Sunday drivers. Daddy, come on out. We want to see how the present we gave you fits. No way. I thought it was going to be a spacesuit or something like that. Listen, Doggy, you're going to need what we gave you a lot more than a spacesuit if you're going to be traveling in outer space. There's nothing to be embarrassed of. The astronauts wear one, too. I'm going to be the laughing stock of the whole galaxy. <laughs> Oh, no, the siren's going. I think that means the space diaper needs changing. Look. Adam, he, he was just playing a game of UFO. And he must have got zapped up by the Zygot people. Those darn Zygot people, they've done this before. Give me ten. There, now, put ten. No. Put that ten dollars and quarters in that machine, and believe me, they'll send them back. Adam! Honey! Oh, I didn't even think I'd see you again. What happened? I, I, I won't forget about it. Come on. What happened? Where's my cat? Uh, by the way, Lisa, why are you in uh, detention today? Well, my teacher says I've been studying too much astronomy. Wait, uh, studying too much astronomy? Why would he put you in detention for that? Well, I guess it's the way I study. You see, every time he starts to talk, I just sort of stare off into space. <laughs> meteor shower last night? Yes, it was incredible, all those oh. meteors falling towards Earth. Isn't that dangerous? What if one hit you on the head? Well, no, Doug, you see, the meteorites are burnt to a crisp in the Earth's atmosphere before they hit Earth. Mm. You know, Ralph's burgers are burnt to a crisp before they hit the table. <laughs> no, I think we should donate one of those burgers to the Smithsonian Institute and save the piece of meteorite. <laughs> they can never tell the difference. I heard that. Hi, Christine. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Dougie. Hi, Christine. Hi, Lisa. Uh, hi, Adam. Uh, um, uh, hi, Christine. Hi, Lisa. Alistair, just stop. What is going on here? Well, I'm practicing to be weightless. I'm going with Dougie and his friends to the cosmos. Don't tell me you believe those stupid stories of Dougie's. Well, how come you're weightless and we're not? Yeah, maybe because there's so much weight holding you girls down. Now, now, hold on a second. Now, are you saying that Lisa Ruddy is overweight? Now, you just, you can't say that. Lisa Ruddy happens to be a very slim young lady. Thank you, exactly. Of course, you realize I wouldn't be saying that unless this was the introduction <laughs> to the opposite. <laughs> you got it. Oh, class. Get ready for our field trip to Alpha Centauri. Oh, not Alpha Centauri again. Sir, can't we go to the library and read some encyclopedia? No, no, I've already booked the flight with NASA. Oh, sir, Alpha Centauri is over four light years away. I mean, we won't make it back in time tonight to see Dynasty. Stop complaining this instant and get moving. Ah, sir, what, what if... Oh. So, Alistair, what's on the menu today? Huh. Freeze-dried barf burgers. Sounds great. Hey, and they even freeze-dried some barf so we don't have to get sick. 
me think of everything. Right. Dig in. All right, now class. Today, you are all going to learn about astrology, the study of the stars and the planets. Uh, now, sir, yes. sir, don't you mean astronomy, the study of the stars and the planets with the telescope and stuff? No, 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 no. We will not be studying any of that focus, focus garbage in my classroom. Scopes. Hogwash. The only real study of the stars is astrology. Now, get out your horoscopes and follow along with me. Uh, any uh, aquariums? You know, I just finished reading this book about all the radio and TV signals that are broadcast every day. Did you know that those signals are just flying off into space in all directions all the time? Do you realize that someday those signals could reach intelligent beings on another planet? And maybe someday those beings could be watching this show. Well, Christine, you have to think about that for a minute. If they were intelligent beings, they wouldn't be watching this show. <laughs> You may have a point there. Oh, um, by the way, the opposites are over. So? So you can't be weightless anymore. What? <laughs> oh. Thanks for the warning. So, Adam, I'm afraid all those science fiction programs you've been watching on TV brought on this condition. Yeah, but I live for those programs. Isn't there another way to cure me? It's painful, Adam. However, it might save your life. Here's your prescription. Two hours, Masterpiece Theater a week, and a good dose of Face the Nation. Oh, and uh, yeah, I'll uh, recommend a good plastic surgeon for those ears. There go my telepathic abilities. Alistair, look at that. Houston, Houston, come here. We have a problem. What kind of problem, Columbia? A green cloud has penetrated the spacecraft and is floating around inside. It looks familiar. Oh, no, it's going to get us. At least one of us. Shuttle, this is Houston. Is that green cloud some kind of alien life form? I don't know. I shouldn't have said that. Hey, it, I, I didn't say it. It was him. An emergency over. Nothing to get worried about. <laughs> Columbia, everything should be a okay up there now. Well, not exactly, Houston. We have a few questions about the space sickness test. What's so hard about that? All we want you to do is eat some food while you're up there in space and see if it makes you sick. But, Houston, the only food you sent up with us were Barth Burgers. <laughs> and we get sick from those even when we're on the ground. I heard that. Warm clothes. Lots of tapes. My teddy bear. Dougie, what are you doing now? Well, you see, I'm packing for my space trip with my alien buddies. I've got to make sure I take the right stuff. Well, what are these little foil packages? Space food. That one's steak with brown Betty for dessert. Ducky, these don't have the slightest resemblance to food. Of course not. They're dehydrated. Oh, I get it. So you have to add water. I was going to have that steak for dinner tonight. Now I have to have corned beef hash. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Adam, have I got good news for you. If you help us with our space program, we're going to set you free. Oh, right. <laughs> Blue skies, barfy burgers, curls. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Go up in the capsule? Uh, not exactly. No, you see, the remote control system for launching a rocket doesn't work. That could be a problem. Exactly. That's why we want you to stand under the locket and light 
diffused. This is amazing. I've never seen formations like this. This telescope must be really powerful. Well, what can you see? The Milky Way? The Andromeda Galaxy? No, I've never seen anything like it. Well, let me have a look. I know my astronomy pretty well. What are all those weird shapes? Lisa, this isn't a telescope. This is a kaleidoscope. <laughs> no wonder it was only 99 cents. <laughs> Earth calling Lisa. Earth calling Lisa. <coughs> I'm right beside you, Christina. <laughs> Yeah, well, you got any last requests? Oh, yeah, I do. Before I go, do you think he'll let me see the third part of the Star Wars movies? I mean, I missed it, and I have to find out what happens to Han Solo. You're a Star Wars fan, so am I. Uh, I twelve times, and the amigos love the comic books, yeah. eh? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so then, you'll let me go? No Great. way, kid. Anyone who didn't see Return of the Jedi and calls himself a Star Wars fan deserves to be shot. Ready? Hey! I thought you wouldn't do this to Luke Skywalker. Valerie, I think this time you've gone just a little too far with this space shuttle thing. And for heaven's sakes, Lance, if it's good enough for our astronauts, it's good enough for the family. But it's different for the astronauts, Mom. They're a thousand of miles out in space. They can't exactly order in. Well, I thought it would be nice to save a few trips to the store. I've got enough food now to last till the 21st century, and it all fits in this one little cupboard. This tube food is so boring. Ah, I've got a surprise for you, Adam. Tonight, your favorite dessert. Fudge brownies with uh, chocolate chip ice cream. Oh, well, Adam, look at it this way. At least we'll be spared your mother's cooking for uh, another decade or two. Hey, Dougie, miss your saucer? <laughs> I'm worried about the aliens. Suppose they got into an accident or something, or fell into a black hole. Dougie, why don't you just admit to yourself and everyone else that you're just making this up? They'll be here. Christine, a big brown saucer just came down and landed on the lawn outside. Maybe Dougie was right. <laughs> That's just a new satellite dish. But these green men got out with eight cigars and eight eyes? <laughs> Those are the producers of this show. <laughs> Sorry, we're late, Dougie. There was a bottleneck around Venus. <laughs> hey, Bart! Uh, yeah. Look at this. It says here that they're going to start sending garbage out into outer space because they have no more room for it on Earth. Mm -hmm. oh, well, where are you going to get your meat from now on? <laughs> uh, don't worry. Uh, it'll re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Food <laughs> oh, is literally out of this world. <laughs> yeah, UFOs, undigestible fried objects. <laughs> hey, Adam. Yeah, Dougie. I heard that in the future, people will be able to live in houses in outer space, just floating there in the sky. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, there's one thing that bothers me, though. Well, say your house was in outer space, wouldn't you have to go a long way to take out the garbage? I never really thought about it like that, Dougie. Hey, Dougie. Yes, Lisa? How was your trip to the observatory? It wasn't that great. Why not? Didn't you see many stars? I saw lots of stars, all right. Especially when I fell and had my head on the ground. <laughs> hey, Christine. Yeah, Adam. Did you know that since there's no air in space, nothing out there ever makes a sound? Well, that's great. We should send Lisa out there right away so that we wouldn't have to listen to her constant yapping. Hey, what a great idea! <laughs> oh, Christine, I don't Lisa, talk that much. Save it. <laughs> oh, Alistair. Yes, Lisa, my dear. Do you know what Christine's favorite star is? Let me guess, uh, Mel Gibson? No, no, not that kind of star. It's serious. Well, yeah, I bet it's serious to her. No, no, it's the star serious. Oh. The dog star. Hey, that's <laughs> great. The dog, no, the it dog. is not great. Lisa, yes, Lucy. I was thinking that you should join the space program right away. Really? Why? Well, because out in space, there's complete weightlessness. And then no one would know how tubby you really are. Tubby? Tubby. Okay. Okay. 
Enough of the fat jokes. I've had it with Lisa, the fat jokes. Just there's something we have to get straight here. The fat jokes will stop when you lose a little weight. Oh. Okay. Houston, this is Columbia. Uh, we seem to have a problem up here. What's the trouble, Columbia? The bathroom doesn't work, Houston. Bodily waste disposal system malfunction. That's toughy, guys. That'll take a while. You're just going to have to do without it until you get back to Earth. Houston, we're going to be up here for five days. Okay, stand by. I have emergency instructions for bodily waste disposal problem. Take your left leg, raise it 16.5 centimeters. Cross it over your right leg and hold on tight. the back in the early days of the space program, the astronauts couldn't eat normal food in space? So? What's so thrilling about that? We live on Earth and we don't even eat normal food. <laughs> Adam, well, what kind of food did they eat? Well, they had to eat food that had been freeze-dried and powdered. Ah, oh, disgusting. <laughs> you know, it's too bad they didn't know about barbs, because his burgers are so old and dry anyway, they could save money. <laughs> <laughs> What is it this time? Well, I was just wondering, what are those funny-looking things the Amigos are holding? They don't look like rifles to me. That's because they aren't. We got a new way of shooting people around here. We got those laser blaster guns from this space program. Mm -hmm. So there are no more dead bodies. They all burn up. <laughs> well, doesn't that sound like a little dangerous? Dangerous? Why? Well, do these lasers shoot right through things? I mean, if you were standing right in front of me, and they shot you, would it go through you and hit me? Wait a minute, let me get this straight. If I am standing right in front of you... Yeah? And they blast, would they get you? Right, because hmm. that's pretty important. Because I'm standing right in front of a wooden post. Mm -hmm. If they hit me, it'd hit this wooden post, and you know what happens when you heat up a wooden post? Sure, it catches on fire. Well, I guess you don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> yes, boys? Oh, good afternoon, ma'am. We were wondering if you'd like to purchase some chocolate bars to uh, sponsor our school field trip. Oh, how nice. Yes, I'll take two. Uh, that'll be $3,000. Uh, $1,500 each. Isn't that just a little steep for chocolate bars? Well, oh, oh, no. See... Our class is going on the shuttle to Mars. Right. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, here you go. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good time. Thank you. What a sucker. She believed that stupid Mars story. Yeah, and we're only going to the moon. <laughs> well, catch you later, Dougie. Don't forget to write. Right. Christine, how is he going to send a letter from outer space? Airmail. Well, there's no air in space. <laughs> All right, then. Special delivery. <laughs> well, goodbye, everybody. I'm really going to miss you. Don't be gone long, son. We'll miss you, too. Uh, Don't be a stranger, Doug. <laughs> um, I think your flight is boarding, Becky. Bye. Bye. <laughs> that was uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> You can't do that on television has been a close encounter of the weird kind. Of course, watching this program has got to be the dumbest encounter in your life. What? Oh, Adam, we're losing oxygen fast. We're going to have to make an emergency landing. Uh, Houston, we have an emergency. Request permission to land immediately. Houston, can you tell us how to get down from here? Sorry, Columbia. It's five o'clock. We're government employees. We go over five. You can't do that. We're still up here. 
How do you expect us to get down? I'm sorry. You'll have to wait until Monday. Over and out. No, Houston, wait a minute. Houston, we know Wait, just a second. Come back. Please. Please, come back.